Welcome to this week's edition of Chatting the Pictures. So, Michael, we have a great batch of photos to get to today. So why don't we dive into our first segment? The photo was taken by Jose Luis Gonzalez for Reuters, and it shows Letty Perez, a Guatemalan migrant with her son Anthony, pleading with a member of the Mexican National Guard to let them pass and cross into the United States. And the photo was taken in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. This photo circulated really widely and in fact was retweeted by political leaders. And I think that's a really important thing to notice because clearly this is an image that taps into a broader narrative than the very painful individual narrative of this mother and her child. If we just talk about it politically for a second, it's a photograph that really bears well for President Trump because what it's done is move the border battle to Mexico. So the fact that you have this kind of confrontation south of our border shows that the buffer has gotten larger. One thing to me that really embodies that is the hand of the soldier on the gun. You get a sense that there's not necessarily a lot of racial and ethnic difference between the soldier in this case and the woman and her child. And I think that plays out in the larger political scene, as you said. You know, this photo is really loaded with emotion. And if you look at all of the photos from the scene, uh, several of which include the mother actively speaking with the soldier. So you don't have a faceless soldier as you have here, but you have images of her pleading with them. These guys themselves who look very young. She here, I think, is in a really interesting position because in this image, is she protecting or being protected by her son? Even despite the painful emotion of uh, Letty Perez, the mother, it's the son Anthony's face that I think really draws us into this photograph. If you see the other images, the other soldier is young, probably around her same age. And there's actually a kind of almost a sympathetic vibe between uh, the two of them. And there's one where she's even holding his hand. In this photo, because his head is cut off, you get that kind of sense of the state and this authoritarian. But in the other images, you see more that he's kind of a victim himself. We've seen images like this before. And one of the reasons I think this photograph got so much traction is because of that anonymity of the state. Here in this photograph, it's not about an interpersonal interaction, right? It's really about power of the state and really the individual powerlessness of the soldiers as they said to her, look, we can't help you. We're doing our jobs. Our next segment we call The Look, and here we're interested in photographs that push the visual boundaries in some way to illuminate a story or an idea. This photo was taken by Philippe Ujazer for Reuters. It shows Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg with French activists from the Youth for Climate movement attending a questions to the government session at the French National Assembly. I feel like this photo should be captioned, Greta is not having it. It is such a wonderful image, partly because of the different expressions of all of these young people but particularly her. She has been this very public figure in the foreground. She came to France as a very visible public figure and activist, and it's like she's heard it all before. You have to love this image of Greta as just a portrait in conscience, that she's all about the others, about what we can't see or what's beyond our vision, and also what's coming. And she certainly is a powerful and striking figure, and this near-Renaissance image certainly amplifies that. I was thinking very much that this is almost like some kind of a genre painting. The richness of the colors, the gold, the red velvet in the foreground, the pillars, and then each of these individuals representing a different face, a different facet, in certain cases, different genders and races. All of those things, I think, make this a kind of visual tableau. And I also want to point out the adult in the background I find interesting. I don't know who this person is, if it's somebody who is with the group that they're representing, if it's a parent or some other authority figure. But I find it really interesting that the adult is in the background and that the children have moved to the foreground. And that's very much a part of what this youth climate action group has been about. Our last segment we call The Pick, and here we're interested in what makes a photo a good editorial choice or what are some reasons why a photo might get particular public traction. 
This photograph was taken by Kala Kessler for the New York Times. She was assigned to the Democratic debates, and it's from a Democratic watch party that she covered with viewing rooms for each candidate. So I don't know which room this is from, but it does show these three women being effusive in reaction to the drama on the screen. We're looking at John Delaney debating Bernie Sanders. He was called on at the outset of the debate where he challenged Medicare for all, and Bernie just came right back and shot him down saying, you're wrong. This to me is such a great example of both the fun and the problem of horse race coverage. So what we have here is the drama of the split screen campaign. You know, there are women candidates, but here we have two white guys on the screen duking it out. And then this group of younger women clearly engaged, but I'm, I'm struck by the gender differential. I'm struck by the age differential, but mainly I'm struck by the extent to which we are definitely at the stage of the drama and the spectacle. And it's one thing to highlight the drama and the spectacle, but one thing that CNN did over those two nights in Detroit is really pitting people against each other. It seems strikingly similar to the way that Trump operates. It was really baiting candidates to go after each other. And it's kind of scary in a way that this photograph seems to say it how much it works. I think you're right. You know, on the one hand, it's really fun. This woman on the bottom left is really an embodiment of this spectacle. There's a phone. She's probably either tweeting or following others who are tweeting about the debate as it's also happening. You know, she's kind of looking off to the side like, oh, look at that. That was a good shot, right? So guilty pleasure. But also her raised eyebrows are a little bit like, okay, is this where we're going to be now? Is this what we're going to be doing? And so her companions are enjoying it. And, you know, the hand gesture of the woman on the right. I mean, they look like sports fans, right? The fact that the liberals like Sanders and Warren not only held their ground, but have made a very strong defense for Medicare for all, breaking sort of the talking points of not just the Republicans, but also the media is totally reinforced in this photograph. These are young voters that are seemingly thrilled by the fact that Bernie is holding his own from the left. And he has an extra amplified mouth. This catch of the screen grab in this photograph is really phenomenal. Bernie with two mouths is having his say. The joy and pleasure, guilty or not, in the drama of the spectators, I think, ties into that very nicely, that we want it amplified somehow, or it needs to be amplified for people to pay attention. The gesture is also one that could be read as quantification, elaboration, emphasis. So there's a lot of power in that. Or maybe he's eating him alive. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining us this week, everybody. We will see you next time. Take care. Thanks.